I'm working on. I'd like to believe that anyone that saw us play this year will have a much better idea of what's going on because, you know, I mean, it's a band. It became kind of exciting to me, the idea of finish, finishing a song, you know, maybe in the morning at the hotel, going to the sound check, teaching the band the song, and then playing it that night. This next song at the bottom of this hat, which I borrowed from uh, Jason. I automatically assume at first that he's asking me because we're friends and he loves me as a friend, you know, and he wants to do nice things for his friends. That's his nature. But after a while, I've come to believe that, like, he does genuinely like the songs that we write, you know, and it believes that they're good, you know, like outside of his affection for us. Sean Foley, who's our good friend who travels with us, he kind of came storming through the door and, he's, and he says, I saw an eagle on a pole. I think it was an eagle. Simon Joyner, my great friend, and mentor and was like, that's a great line for a song. And somehow, you know, started, I guess, sort of as a joke, but, you know, it was decided that everyone should write a song called the Eagle on a Pole. So I wrote one, which ended up on the record, the last record. Jason wrote one. I, he didn't even say anything about it. He just kind of one day started playing it. And, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I love it. It's great. Very paranoid. Very paranoid song. We like rehearse sound checks. You know, we started rehearsing like, we would make sure to have this early sound check and we would have rehearsed for like an hour and a half or something. Run through it a few times and then yeah, usually, depending on how far along we were, we'd play it that night. And it might be rough, but who cares? I don't know how to play the guitar like like Taylor at all. Like I remember there was one rehearsal once, like <laughs> and Taylor had kind of come up with this like, little thing. He's like, "Why don't you try to do this with me?" And he did like this like crazy thing, and I was like, "I can't." He he looks to the right sources. You know, he's in it for you know for real. He's learned it from the heart, and not from a textbook. Air mattress was like. I wrote it while I was mixing Bad Little Kitty, you know, and I was wish I was sleeping on that air mattress with a girl. But then I thought about, you know, times with the air, you know, the air mattress and the leaks, and you can be sleeping like this, and it like slowly leaks through the night, and then you wake up and you're like that, you know. So you, you know, you end up together with that girl, and uh, it's a good thing. <laughs> He was always kind of writing, he wrote some great ones, and Freitas couldn't write any songs. He was super stressed out about it. And he was like, fuck man, like, 
I can't write any songs, you know, like every, and then like Connor rips one off for Macy to sing. He's like, oh yeah, here's one for you. Connor came up to me in South Carolina one day and, and said that he wrote this song for me, which I was flattered about and, and kind of weird about because I've never really done anything like that. I've sung so songs with people, some cover songs. It's a, it's a different sort of vibe. Um, and he claims at least he had me in mind when he wrote the lyrics and I can identify with most of the lyrics which is a good thing of just kind of being lost a lot and just looking for something that's some maybe not there. But it's a, it's a good song. But it didn't stay. Don't make no plans anymore except to go away. The table's set and now the guests will be here soon. Last show of the tour, boys. This is it. That's all she wrote. People ask me, oh, what's going to happen with this band and all these new songs? I would just say, I don't know. <laughs> You can wear your new white shoes In the muddy afternoon Walking past the stay drunk stoop They whistle with their hands But I could be your cat call too I don't remember when, but at some point it was like, alright We're gonna record an album after this And then it was like, alright, it's a job Like, we gotta start working on these songs it happened in a 24-hour period, the decision to make a record. It kind of just clicked that we should do it and we were getting to the point where we had like five or six or seven songs that should be on the record, you know, when Connor started writing songs. I've always thought it would be amazing to make a record at the end of a long tour when the band is tight and you've been playing together every night for a number of months. By the end of the tour, and you know, it usually sounds pretty good, and then the tour ends and we never play together again. We were all really excited, but then there's a lot of logistics that had to be dealt with, but then all those things fell into place incredibly easy as well. We talked about a number of different studios or ideas, and then I think Connor mentioned this place. I can claim that I tamed you. A Sonic Ranch, outside El Paso, in a beautiful pecan forest. Really similar to the, what we were trying to, you know, build from scratch and into Pasolan at Valle Mystico. It was a perfect way to end a tour. If I would have gone home, I would have went totally crazy. We played a show and then drove overnight and literally pulled up in the morning to the studio. You can paint your nails Chilled like out, me. very peaceful, quiet, Just out in the middle of nowhere. By that night, we were like, you know, getting drum sounds and tracking songs. So it is totally better. <clears throat> Just how much room should be in the room mics? Like, if we felt like that was too roomy. Like, 